This episode of Dirt Time is brought to you by Rolenka. Rolenka is the world's best source for coconut fiber erosion and sediment control products. Specializing in constructible, efficient, and cost-effective solutions, Rolenka's products are not only effective, but also 100% biodegradable. Check out the BioD Block Coyer system, along with Rolenka's entire product line at www.rolenka.com. Rolenka, your earth-friendly solution. Hi, this is John McCullough. You know, welcome to this episode of Dirt Time TV. This episode is going to be about shoreline protection. We're on the Chena River in Fairbanks, Alaska, literally on the river, and we're going to be working on some of the shoreline erosion issues up here. We're going to use some really cool new materials. We've got coir blocks and coir rolls. Okay, we're uh, on the outskirts of Fairbanks. We're looking for Jeff's Harrison's house. We're going to meet with Jeff and Elaine Mayer with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service today just to make sure everything's set up, are the materials there, the equipment, uh, are, we, are we all in line for what's going to happen? Because, boy, when, it, when we get started, I'm, I'm hoping we can, uh, we can keep this thing going. Well, we're here at the Chena River, and we're going to try to do some stream bank stabilization here. Uh, it's almost like lakeshore stabilization because our biggest problems are not the current of the river. It's more a combination of factors. One of the biggest issues that's happening is Fairbanks' very popular tourist area and they have some nice river boats and other boating opportunities that go up and down the river and those things generate waves. So the waves are coming in and eroding the banks and washing this fine silt away. Of course, uh, the silt wouldn't be washing away if there was still a good uh, functioning riparian corridor, riparian being the, the vegetation that, that was existing here. Large trees, shrubs, the roots are holding the silt together and, and holding the banks together. One of the things we're going to try to get some vegetation back in here, also try to break this wave, wave splash and wave impact. This is your beach. This is your beach. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, uh -huh. Look at this, this is incredible. If you, dig, if you dig too far back into the bank, that's what we're going to run into. Is that right. pure muck and it is on this river is on the far side. Gotcha. Yeah, the water's coming in and just like, just like an ocean on a cliff, the wave energy is being dissipated against the cliff here. And then as the water flows back down the beach, it's taking the fines with it. So it's constantly hitting, eroding, and removing. Wait till we see the river boats. From here to your property line right over there, this is going to be the coir. I'm really excited about trying these, uh, these coir logs. So, you know, I've, uh, I've never installed these before, so we're all going to be learning together, okay? They're like gabions. They're coir gabions. And then these are the tiebacks. This, this wraps it back into the bank. So you have your, your tiebacks in the bank. So we need enough of a terrace for you to kind of lay that down. And then this will go on the terrace. And then we backfill. And then we wrap this over the backfill. And we lay our next one and start our next level up. We can actually go in there with the excavator and actually cut this back so we can dig our terrace for all of our coir work. If we have our coir at this elevation right here, the waves will hit it, but everything above it, we can have like live siltation. These, these willows can be planted back relatively deep back in there. You know, we find a place where we don't have a lot of these clumps to move. I, the problem is when you want to do these in, little inundations here, undulations, those are going to cause little localized eddies and scours. So we have to kind of figure on that. Wherever there's, wherever there's undulations, the water's going to have little turbulences some way, and that turbulence could cause some problems. So the bottom of your trench, and follow my dots, will be the outer edge of your trench. Leave this alone. If you're in the river, you're not even going to see the coir right here because this is going to be in front of the coir. Might as well leave that there. It'll help protect it. It's like minimal impact construction. This is going to be cool. So they're bringing in the uh, compost and topsoil right now. Oh boy, I wish we had uh, laid a little more gravel out here. He's really got some ruts. 
This is that darn muskeg. Look at those things are two feet deep. You know, we uh, could have laid some filter fabric down and about six inches worth of rock. And I think that would have helped us uh, give it a little bit of stability maybe. In this section right in here, we're gonna put in the, the Coyer D blocks. What we're trying to do is get a nice foundation, uh, probably about three feet wide, fairly level, and then that terrace and will give us a foundation to lay the, the fiber roll and the fiber blocks, and then we'll be able to put the block in and then backfill behind it and wrap around. But we need kind of a, uh, a pretty good foundation in there and a nice flat terrace to do that one. It's gonna be a nice day today. It's like it's sunny, it's gonna get warm. The way this is going along Jeff's uh, property here, on the upstream end, we're going to do the uh, coir block and coir rolls. This is coir, it's actually, uh, it's actually coconut, but this is called the, uh, the bio, bio block. And what it is, it's the, it's the coir arranged as a little box. It's like a little uh, gabion basket. And then it's got this uh, coir netting. This is uh, about seven grams per meter. This is a pretty, pretty strong coir netting uh, wrapped around it as a tie back. I haven't hooked these up before, but I think we're going to also have some anchors in the front and maybe through, through the back also to help secure them so they don't float. But these should be uh, pretty easy to install and we'll give those a try. As far as I know, these haven't been installed up here. This is the typical bioengineering construction stake. You choose the length based on your substrate. And then this is, we will lay the bottom piece of fabric out. We're gonna have 10, 20 feet of it. I'm gonna bring the excavator over and backfill behind that. And then we're going to build a terrace behind it. We're gonna lay the second course 10, 20 feet above that. Yeah, we're gonna key it in right about over there. Okay. Come this way just a little bit, right about like that. Okay. It's gonna be it. Yeah, we need the actual construction stakes and we need a large sledgehammer. See, Nancy, they have a, uh, they also have a sleeve here where they slide into each other. It's kind of cool the way these fit. This one slides into the next one. There's an overlap of the netting here and it's like a coupling, if you will. So that's kind of a neat, a neat feature that these have. So now it's just, an, just kind of visualizing and seeing where we want the actual face of it. And I think that face is okay over here where you are, Nancy. Looks kind of natural, maybe. Keep them uh, as straight as possible. You think it's frozen? It feels like it, it hit something pretty solid all of a sudden. Right We're trying to put the stakes in about every uh, two foot on center, at least uniform. Uh, it's gonna show a lot from the, from the water's edge, so we wanna make it look as good as possible. Perfect, you got a good eye, John. So I'm uh, centering them that far from that little knot to the edge. So here's the backside of the, the bio block. Uh, we we want to make sure that this face is vertical, but this is the important component. We have a, we have a tie back, a reinforcing tie back here. So when we backfill this with soil, there's no way this is going to be able to move because we're going to keep this tie back really tight in here. And then we'll backfill with soil and then we're gonna bring this top back over and that will reinforce and also hold the block in place. And this flap will come back over here. We'll make sure we compact it. That'll give us a terrace to start our next block and it'll come up and, and work its way up. We decided we're gonna put a couple more blocks, a couple more stakes right here just to hold this face up vertical. We want it to be as secure as we possibly can. We don't want that riverboat wake slamming into this thing and, and starting it moving. So one of the things I'd like to do when we, uh, John, when we're securing these is I wanna make sure that this stake is as vertical as possible and this stake really wedges in there, okay? 
See, this movie making is not an easy job. <laughs> okay, so now we have some uh, stakes on the face of it to keep it vertical. A few more stakes on the inside to help hold that in place. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go up there and, and get the excavator and, and backfill. What we want to do, uh, John, is make sure that that's as tight as you can now. Try to pull that, uh, that blanket up a bit. You know, this is, is looking good. What we want is we want that edge just a little bit low so when that wraps around, it's dipping down a little bit and that, and that fabric coming down and then weight on it will hold this thing down. So I, I don't want it perfectly flat. And I do, I, notice I was trying to get it, the dip to go back. It's uh, easier said than done. The tendency is always want to get them flat or sloping outward. I think that's, I think that's about right. All right, let's give her a try, see how this looks. As we were compacting the backfill, it kind of tilted the block over a little bit. So right now, uh, John is trying to get that this back stake down a little bit farther. We're driving it home, give us a little more security. Let's try pulling this, try pulling this as tight as you can. Someone pull tight, and someone and get this camera. stake started on an angle like this. Get it started in there, and then the stake can pull this a little bit tighter. Okay. We'll have if the stake in there to hold it temporarily and I can get the hoe on here. That's, that's pretty tight. Okay, a few more taps. And... Okay, okay, let's continue this along here. We'll do, do them about every three feet or so. What we're trying to do is, is pull this piece back as tight as we possibly can. We have a chance right now to pull it back and get it tight. Of course, eventually I'm going to have soil on here, but I want to be able to get it tight. Then I'm going to bring the equipment down. I'm going to try to pull this edge back by pulling back in here a bit. Actually, we're, actually it's looking pretty good. I not need the equipment. We'll cut these guys off. These stakes will hold it. Bring the equipment in. We'll lay a... Uh, lay a little bit of soil on here, press the soil down a little bit, get another terrace, and then we'll start our next wrap of the next fold. Here's our 16-inch uh, our D block. We're setting it down on top of the smaller block here. We're going to use this to join to the coir log, and we've brought it in just about three inches on the face, and our next coir log is going to be 12 inches. So that'll bring us back to level here. We want to set the 12 inch log back just a little bit in here. And we want to set this guy in and batter it back just a little bit. 